Hey guys, this is Jason from Micro Starter Supply, and today we're going to be going over the most essential tool, which is going to be the multimeter. So the multimeter is the number one tool you need in order to troubleshoot uh, these sort of electronic or any sort of electronics besides having a grid. So we're going to be going over also um, how to choose a good multimeter and what sort you want to look for in a multimeter throughout the video. Um, but you need to know how uh, a multimeter works and how it applies Ohm's law in order to uh, in order to give you the resulting numbers and how that applies to a good multimeter. So we're going to be going through a few functions here. So if we look at this one here, you see we're going to be going over DC voltage, resistance, continuity measurements, down mode measurements, as well as current measurements. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go over DC voltage measurements. So if you remember from a previous video, uh, voltage is generally how fast or how uh, much pressure or how much potential is behind the electricity when it flows through a circuit. So if we compare that to water again, um, how, how hard that water is or how fast that water is being pushed through a pipe or a faucet or out the end of a faucet is the same thing as the voltage in uh, electricity. So when we measure voltage with a multimeter, we don't actually measure um, the amount of or how, the potential of electricity at a specific point. What we're doing with a multimeter is we're measuring the difference in that potential of electricity between one point and another. Now, generally, when someone tells you to measure something like a 12 volt rail, what they're saying is this rail should have uh, a 12 volt potential when compared to ground where ground has a potential of zero volts. That's generally how uh, DC electronics work. So what they're saying is you put your multimeter into DC voltage mode, you take your one of your probes, which is generally going to be the black probe, and you put that on ground, and you take the other probe, and you put it on the rail you want to measure, in this case a 12 volt rail. And you can see on the multimeter we get 12.85 volts. So 12, approximately 12 volts. Now, this multimeter is measuring the difference in voltage between a, a, a point with zero volt potential and a point with 12 volt potential. Now, 12 minus zero is gonna be 12. And that's how the multimeter reads 12 volts on the display. Now, what happens when we take another line that has a higher voltage, in this case, 45 volts, and we put, instead of putting the black probe on ground, we put it on a 12 volt row. Well, the multimeter reads 33 volts. Now why is that? Because the multimeter is reading the difference in voltage between these two points. It's measuring 45 volts on one point and 12 volts on another, and the difference between 45 and 12 is going to be 33 volts. Now, this is not a function we generally use a lot in electronics. However, it's a good function to know if you want to measure, say for example, you're in circuit and you want to measure the voltage drop um, across a resistor or something like that. That's a good way to test it when you're in circuit and the circuit has power going through it. Now, you might be wondering, how come when I measure the voltage in a circuit, I put my black probe on ground and I put my red probe on the point I want to measure the voltage at, but it doesn't create a short circuit. I did the same thing in an earlier video where I tested whether the charger was a genuine charger or a knockoff charger by creating a short circuit on the output where I put the black probe on ground and the red probe on the output of the charger. And you saw that created a short circuit and there was a huge spark and a lot of current flowed through the multimeter and the charger shut off. Well, the difference is that when you measure voltage on a multimeter, there's actually a very high internal resistance. I can actually measure it with another multimeter in resistance mode. And you can see this is measuring approximately 10 million ohms. There's a very high internal resistance in this multimeter. So any good quality multimeter like this BK Precision or this Fluke will generally have this listed in the manual or the data sheet for the uh, multimeter. And generally they're all around 10 million ohms. You want to have a nice high internal resistance because what this does is it prevents, number one, it prevents it from shorting out um, the circuit. So now Insta uh, because electricity takes the path of least resistance, because this is a very high um, resistance, very little electricity is going to flow through the multimeter, just enough so that the multimeter can get a reading of how uh, what the voltage is on that what you're measuring. Now, when I put the multimeter into current mode measurements, 
And now you can see the internal resistance is extremely low, almost no resistance, zero ohms basically. And so what that does is now this creates a short circuit. So if I was to do the same thing um, now where the multimeter is in, resist is in uh, current mode measurements and I put the black probe on ground and the red probe on a power rail, for example, because this is such low resistance, a lot of electricity would flow through the multimeter and you'd end up with a short to ground, just like I did in a previous video. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important that you end up with a multimeter that has a very high internal resistance, usually around 10 million ohms. Now, this uh, high resistance in the multimeter actually serves a second purpose, and that is because um, in electricity, uh, when, when you are measuring voltage with your multimeter, and you, you're effectively putting your multimeter into the circuit in parallel with the uh, actual circuit. Now, um, this might be a little complicated if you don't have any previous electronics experience um, or any previous uh, electronics knowledge to understand, but I'm going to try to explain this best to you as I can. Now, there are two types of circuits. There's a parallel circuit and there's a series circuit. Uh, so, if I, wanna, if I have point A and point B here, and electricity wants to go through from point A to point B, it's got a couple options. Now, in a series circuit, electricity will flow from point A to B like this. Okay, there we go. So, if these are two separate components, the orange and the purple line are two separate components, then these components are in series, and the electricity is going to flow through component, the orange component, through the purple component, to point B. And that's how electricity is going to flow in series from point A to B. Now, if we take a parallel circuit, like this, this lower one is a parallel circuit. Now you can see, uh, for electricity to get from point A to B, it's got a couple of options. It can either go through A, or it can either go through the orange line, or it can go through the pur or purple line. And so that's a parallel circuit. You see how these two lines are in parallel? So this is a parallel circuit. Electricity has the option of, if these are the same resistance, zero, if they're just straight wires, electricity can flow in either line. Now, what happens when we want to measure, say, voltage? Now, if we draw the same thing here, you've got point A and B, and you've got a wire going between them like this. Now, I want to measure the voltage at point A in, uh, in respect to point B. Now, with my multimeter, what I'm going to do, let me draw my multimeter. So this thing labeled M is my multimeter, like that. Now, what I'm going to do is, with my multimeter, I'm going to put one probe on point A, and I'm going to put a second probe on point B, just like that. And what does this look like? Well, this is a parallel circuit. Now, electricity has the option of flowing either through here or through here in order to get from point A to B. That's a parallel circuit. Now, what does this mean? Well, your multimeter is in parallel with the circuit where you're measuring voltage. Now, what happens when your multimeter is in parallel with the circuit that it's measuring voltage on? Now, with a cheaper multimeter, like this one here, well, remember, all these multimeters have an internal resistance to them. So if I measure the internal resistance of this cheaper multimeter, You see, instead of getting 10 million ohms, 10 million ohms like I was getting on this BK position, on this cheaper one, I'm only getting 1 million ohms. So it's about 10 times less internal resistance on this one than it is on the BK position. Now, when you're in parallel and you're measuring voltage in a circuit, your multimeter is effectively becoming part of the circuit. So let's take a circuit like this, for example. You see we've got a power supply that at the positive end is sending out 10 volts, goes through the first resistor and into the second resistor, R2 and R1 respectively, and into the other end of the power supply, which we'll call ground. And so these two resistors, as you can see, are in series because the electricity has to flow through both of these. Uh, it has to flow through resistor one and into resistors two before it can get back into ground. That's effectively two resistors in series. Now, this circuit together, where you have two resistors in series, is called a voltage divider. 
Now, what a voltage divider like the name implies does is it divides the voltage. So at the point between these two resistors, it'll be a lesser voltage than the point where uh, then uh, what comes into the first resistor or where the uh, where the circuit starts. So the the uh, the point be here between the R1 and R2, you'll have a lesser voltage than here um, where the positive of the power supply is entering the first resistor. Now, how do we calculate what the voltage is that we want to see at this point between these two resistors? Well, believe it or not, there's a fucking formula for that. No, save. The formula in order to calculate uh, the voltage at that point between those two resistors in a voltage divider is VO or your final vol uh, your output voltage at that point between those two resistors is equal to VI, your initial voltage going into the first resistor, times the second resistance, which is then divided by the, f the sum of those two resistance resistors in that voltage divider circuit. Or in other words, VO is equal to VI times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, because the if you remember in the circuit, your initial voltage was 10 volts, and you, the two resistors were both 1 me mega ohm respectively, you get an output voltage of Five volts. There's the math. VO is equal to ten times one million divided by one million plus one million is equal to five volts. Now that means that at this point between the two resistors in this circuit, at that point there, we'd expect to see five volts. Now what if we wanted to measure that with a multimeter? Well, let's put our multimeter into the circuit. So let me draw that. This is how you would measure the voltage in at that point between those two resistors. You take your multimeter and you put one probe on the uh, end of the circuit on ground, and you put the other probe on the point you want to measure between those two resistors, just like that. And your multimeter, that green thing there, is now what? What does this look like? Well, the multimeter now is in parallel with the circuit. Now, that means that electricity ha now has the option of flowing through this resistor as well as through the multimeter in order to get back to ground. Now, remember, every single multimeter has got an internal resistance. In this case, if we're using the cheaper multimeter, we have an internal resistance of one million ohms, one mega ohm, just like that. Now, because this is a, a, a parallel sub-circuit within this larger circuit, this little section here with the multimeter and this resistance, or sorry, and this resistor has uh, its own resistance because it's a parallel circuit now. Now, in order to calculate the resistance, we can go back to our, our formula. In a parallel circuit, the total resistance in that circuit is calculated by this formula. One over the resistance total is equal to one over the resistance of the first component plus the resistance of the second component plus the resistance of the third component and so on and so forth until you reach all of the uh, to uh, components in the circuit in order to calculate your total resistance. So that's your resistance uh, that's how you calculate resistance in a parallel circuit. You take 1 divided by your uh, resistance total is equal to 1 over your first resistance, in this case 1 million ohms, plus 1 over your second resistance, or in this case another million ohms, which is the second resistance being this multimeter, and you add those up. So now, 1 over to RT is equal to 2 over 1 million ohms is equal to approximately 0 0.000002 and therefore RT 
is equal to 500,000 ohms, or in other words, 500K, just like that. So the, so the resistance in a parallel circuit, you can see 1 over RT total, where RT is uh, resistance total, is equal to 1 divided by your first resistor, 1 million ohms, plus 1 divided by your second resistor, the multimeter, 1 million ohms, where that is equal to 1 over RT, is equal to 2 over 1 million, is equal to 0 0.000002, and RT then, using algebra, is equal to 500,000 ohms, or 500K. Now, all of a sudden, this subsection of the circuit here, these two, this where the multimeter is measuring and that resistor is, this suddenly becomes 500K. Where everything I circled on blue there, that's your parallel subcircuit, where these two components are in parallel, your multimeter and that resistor. And this suddenly becomes 500K. Now, originally, this was 1 million ohms, or, and now it's 500,000 ohms. Now, what's, gonna that, what's that going to do to our voltage divider formula? Well, if we go back to the voltage divider formula, where VO, v, your, your voltage at that point between those two resistors, is equal to your VI, or your input voltage, which is 10 volts, times your second resistance, in this case, no longer 1 million ohms, but instead 500,000 ohms, divided by your two resistors total, on 0.5 million ohms, need one more zero, so now that's what you're, you're getting, and VO is now, instead of equaling 5 volts, it's now going to equal to 3.33 repeating volts, or 3.33 volts, just like that. Now all of a sudden, instead of reading 5 volts at this point here with your multimeter, your multimeter is becoming part of the circuit and is now lowering the voltage at this point to 3.33 volts. And suddenly, that's exactly why the resistance of your multimeter suddenly matters. So why is it so important that your multimeter have a high internal resistance, like these BQ precisions or these flukes? Well, if instead of being a 1 million ohm resistance, we have a 10 million ohm resistance in this multimeter, how does that change our parallel subcircuit? So our parallel subcircuit is now um, 1 million ohms on that first resistor and 10 million ohms on the multimeter, or, this, or a second resistor you can think of it as of. So, and now we can calculate the resistance in that parallel circuit, 1 over RT, resistance total is equal to 1 over 1 million ohms, plus 1 over 10 million ohms. And this is equal to 909 thousand ohms or roughly the original one million ohms that it was. It's only off by a factor of uh, about 10 percent. Instead of the original um, when we're using this uh, multimeter, the cheaper multimeter, it was off by about 50 percent and that creates a huge difference. Now as you can see in this formula, the higher the resistance of your multimeter, as this increases, this gets closer and closer to zero. And effectively, your resistance total is going to stay closer to the original resistance. So ideally, your multimeter would have an infinite resistance in an ideal situation. However, um, some electricity has to flow through the multimeter in order for the multimeter to measure um, the uh, amount of voltage uh, going through that circuit. So, but that is important to understanding how a multimeter measures voltage and why it's important to have a good quality multimeter with a high internal resistance, usually of about 10 million ohms or higher.